Hello, I've got the Yamaha CLP545 here on my right and the CLP575 here on my left. If you're trying to decide between them, then this video is for you because I'm going to explain exactly what the differences are between the two and what you get for your extra money on the 575. Take a look at the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on Yamaha Digital Pianos, deliveries fast and free across the UK. So as you'd expect, two models like these that are next to each other in the range have many things that are similar. But you're watching this video because you want to know what the differences are between the two. Let's get into that now. First of all, the price difference between these two is approximately £500. Uh, the prices tend to go up and down a little bit, but the gap between these models tends to stay the same at about £500. Now for me, there are four big things that make the 575 a much better piano than the 545. And they are, in order of importance, number one, a piece of technology that Yamaha have included called virtual resonance modelling. Now, I'll attempt to translate that into human for you. If you think of standing next to a concert grand piano, if you've ever done that, a nine foot long concert grand piano cabinet, and you wrap your knuckles on the top, you hear that echo go through the whole piano. It has this wonderful cavernous effect as the vibrations are picked up and they swell around the cabinet. They even cause the strings to vibrate slightly and this swelling sound occurs. It's, it's quite a lovely thing. Um, that technology is included, is sampled and then included in the 575. It's the first one in the range that has it. And what it means in basic terms is the playing experience, as you'll see demonstrated, is quite wonderful. You just brush the strings and you can hear the cabinet that's not there but the simulated cabinet howling and whistling and the strings playing off each other's vibrations. It's really lovely. It's called virtual resonance modeling. It's in the 575 and for me it makes playing it very authentic and quite an organic, for want of a better word, experience. It's very nice indeed. The second big thing is the speaker configuration. Now, the KDAT doesn't sound like a particularly exciting thing, but there is a big difference between these two. Now the basic speakers, 545 has two 25 watt speakers and 75 has got um, two 40 watt speakers, but that's not the difference I'm talking about. If you look underneath, there is a large wooden bass box speaker and this makes a heck of a difference when you play. Particularly at the bass end, there's a lovely, rich, deep, warm sound when you play those lower notes. And of course this means the playing experience becomes, again, more realistic. You can put more light and shade into your playing. When you play the two side by side, that bass box makes the 545 sound a little bit flat and a little bit tinny. Uh, that's not criticising 545, I'm just saying what the differences are between them. You get a big bass box in there. And for me, that is the second big difference between the two. Now, the third big thing is to do with the pedals on the floor and uh, in particular, the dampener pedal. Now, um, they both have three pedals, as you can see down the bottom. But this difference between them is to do with how you control the dampener pedal. And for this, let me give a brief explanation of how the dampener pedal works, if you don't know. Um, you play a note on a traditional piano, a hammer hits a string and it vibrates like this. And um, as long as your foot's on the sustain pedal, the dampener will be off the string, allowing that string to vibrate. But as you take your foot off the pedal, the dampener returns and it quietens down the string. OK, and you can you can vary how much you make the string um, vibrate until you've killed it completely and the sound stops. On 545, you can have the string vibrate you can dampen it 50% and you can have it killed completely with no sound. Um, but when you compare that to a traditional piano, it's not actually very good. On 575, there is what they call the um, GP dampener response. That's the name they give it anyway. And what it does is allows you, just allows you to, just as you get on a real piano, to vary to many degrees how much your dampener 
stops the string vibrating. It's not just half and then completely off. There, you can just touch it, slow it slightly. It's, it's a big thing to do when you're playing, when you become an advanced player. Um, it's present on a traditional piano. 575 is the first one in the range that gives you that, that gives you the ability to express that in a digital piano. I think it's very important, 575 is the first one in the range to have it, 545 in comparison, pretty one dimensional. Okay, and the fourth thing is to do with the key mechanisms themselves. Both of these use the Yamaha GH3 uh, graded hammer key mechanism. And the graded part means that down at the bottom, just as on a traditional piano, the keys, the hammers, therefore the keys feel heavier. And as you go up, they get lighter. But on 545, it works in blocks. So you may have five keys where the hammers are exactly the same, then you go up five and they're slightly lighter, then the next five are slightly lighter but all the same, and so on and so on. 575 is just like a traditional piano in that no two keys are weighted the same. Every single one up the whole keyboard is different. So you can tell from those four things I've just explained, the virtual resonance modeling, uh, the speaker base box, the pedal dampener response curve, and also the um, linear graded hammers, every key being different. These are all things that have shifted the 575 more towards the real experience of playing a real concert grand piano. So in summary, that is where your extra 500 pounds-ish is going. What that really means, whether you're an advanced player already or whether you're aiming to be an advanced player, or indeed you want your child to become an advanced player, is longevity. It's going to last longer because you're not going to outgrow it as you become a subtle player with more skill, more able to appreciate those features. I'm loath to criticise 545 because for how much it is, it's very good and it does have a lot of very good features. But like most digital instruments, it does have its limitations. But 575 takes it a step up. And for the extra £500, that's what it's going to give you, longevity. It's likely that um, it's going to last into the higher grades. A question I'm asked quite often is, what grade will 575 get me to? In theory, the lowest one in the range will get you to grade 8. The problem is, you become a better player, you become a more sensitive, subtle player, and you actually realise the limitations of them. 575 is a big step up above 545, well worth the extra 500-ish pounds, I would say, because it's a step closer, quite a large step closer to the real authentic experience of playing a piano. So that virtual resonance modeling technology, here it is in action on the 575. Uh, listen for that lovely howling, whistling, almost haunting sound that you'd expect to get from a nine foot long concert grand piano. It's a really, really lovely effect. And here's a comparison of the two pianos and the difference the speaker setup makes. Listen out for the 575's bass speaker box along the bottom. It makes a really big difference with those lower notes, lovely and deep and rich sounding bass notes, whereas the 545 in comparison is a little bit lightweight, a little bit um, dry and woody sounding.
So as I mentioned before, there are many things that are similar between these two models being next to each other in the range. Just to go through some of those, the important ones. Uh, anyway, they both have weighted keys, the Yamaha GH3 mechanism with wooden keys, by the way, on both of these. 545 was the first one that has wooden keys introduced, on the white keys anyway. Both of these have wooden keys and synthetic ivory key tops on both of them. They both have 34 voices or sounds. Um, they've got the Yamaha Concert Grand Piano, the CFX3, plus the Bosendorfer Imperial Grand, which is a really lovely, smooth, soft um, sounding Concert Grand Piano, harpsichord, strings, choirs, etc, etc. Um, escapement mechanism is present in both of these. This is a thing that's not actually necessary on a digital piano, but it's, it's trying to um, replicate the real experience of playing a piano. In short, escapement mechanism works like this. When you play a note on the piano and you hold your finger down, the, the string keeps vibrating. So the hammer can't be on the string, can it? It's had to have escaped. Now, the way that that is, works on a piano is uh, the hammer is allowed to be freed by some workings in the mechanism, but crucially, you feel it through your fingertip when that happens, when the hammer escapes from the string. And it's a tiny little notch. It's very subtle and you've really got to look for it, but if you're used to it in our concert grand piano, you'll definitely notice it. Um, both of these have that escapement mechanism, which is a nice little feature. 16 track recording is present on both of these, so you can use the onboard sounds to record 16 layers on top of each other. Uh, you can also then transfer that recording as a, a MIDI file or a WAV file off on a USB stick to to a computer or wherever you want to go with it. Maximum polyphony number is 256, which is very large, more than adequate really. That's the amount of uh, notes that can be produced at the same time. Uh, I've explained this a few times in other videos. It's not a case of um, I've got 10 fingers, I can only play 10 notes, but each note you play probably triggers off five or six um, separate samples, uh, even more if you're using sustain pedal as well. So they quickly add up. If we only had a polyph maximum polyphony of two, then I'd play one note, go to play another, and the second note wouldn't sound. So it, that's what happens. But when we're 256, there's plenty of room for maneuver, which means you can play with more subtlety. There's more freedom to play uh, extra expression and extra notes. They both have the LED display as well. You can see those close up, exactly the same controls too. Um, some of the features on there where you can split the keyboard in two and have two separate sounds are present on both of them, um, as is the dual sound where you can play two layers on top of each other over the whole length of the piano. MIDI in and out and through is present on both of them. As I mentioned before, so is USB. So you can take MIDI out via USB if you want on both of these pianos. So in summary, the four things that lift the 575 above and ahead of the 545 are number one, the virtual resonance modeling. That's the effect that simulates the cavernous um, swelling sound that you get on a real concert grand piano in a digital piano. Uh, the speaker bass box that goes underneath that it gives you those lovely, deep, rich, mellow sounds when you play. Three is the dampener response in the pedal allowing you a full curve of variation rather than just a one-dimensional 50% uh, and then off. And finally, the uh, hammers, the graded hammer system on the 545. It only comes in blocks of a number of keys where they'll be the same and then the next block will be slightly lighter. Um, 575 has a linear graded action, which means every single key feels different to play. Um, now it's very subtle, I have to add, but each key is graded differently, getting lighter as you go up, exactly the same as you get on a traditional piano. Now just on a side note about the uh, colour variations you can get for these pianos, um, I get a lot of questions about the white one, the plain white one like this, and how it uh, discolours over time, if it discolours at all. And my answer to that is, um, first of all, it's white, so it is going to discolor, or certainly marks will appear uh, more prominently than the darker colors. That's just a fact. But if you look at this one, have a close look at it. We've had this one in the showroom for probably three or four months, and it's been manhandled around. We've caught it with our feet on the bottom, 
and it's not actually in too bad a condition. Um, but the simple fact is the darker colours won't show marks as much, but the white doesn't discolour too badly if you look after it. It does have a dust cover over the keys as well, but uh, yeah, the plain white, it's not too bad. Well, I hope that's been helpful to you if you're trying to choose between these two pianos. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below this video or you can email us. Have a look at our other videos if you're comparing different models. We do a lot of side-by-side -side comparisons like this and we have a lot of interesting things including competitions and giveaways on our Facebook page so follow us on there too. But for now, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.